Hello everyone, this is Krishna from Informatica Support and uh, today's session I will be talking about how we can use PageHeap for debugging Windows corruption issues. So we are going to learn um, debugging Windows memory corruption problems and I'll also show you a stack trace of uh, such incident and we'll look at uh, the OS tools like PageHeap and GFlags here and what does a page heap offers and how it will help to isolate the issue and I also show you a demo of how to enable page heap in the command line and then run the application debugging corruption issues um, memory corruption issues is a complex uh, problem um, so the challenge associated with the uh, corruption issues is mainly um, because during the execution um, of the application say um, there is a point at which the corruption happened say at x minutes um, the crash will not happen immediately whereas the crash actually happens at much later stage that is after y x plus y minutes um, when the corrupted memory is accessed by another thread so and that will lead to um, the crash and then we'll get a core file so the context which is saved in that core file will not have any evidence of what has led to the corruption and uh, by the time the core file is generated we load the context and we it will be really challenging to find out what led to the corruption so how do you debug such kind of problems the solution to debug such kind of problems is moving back closer to the point when corruption is happening and dump the process at the same instance at the same time so that we'll be able to capture the context of which of the threads are accessing on the memory um, which is uh, causing a corruption and then look at those stack traces and then figure out which is a function so uh, I'll talk about uh, how we can do that using a page heap which is a windows utility uh, available and uh, what are the steps to enable that in the subsequent slides so uh, in this stack trace we can see that okay, this is an example of a stack trace of a problem which uh, where the thread has crashed because of a windows memory corruption so uh, from the stack trace we can see that this is a writer thread and uh, we are calling a destructor which is a file reader destructor which uh, will deinitialize the members which are allocated and free up before the thread is terminated so this happened at the fag end of the session when we are uh, completing the activities and then once the mapping is run we are calling the destructor of the writer thread and that led to the crash so as the stack points out from the file reader we are calling free free heap and finally going to coalesce free blocks and that led to the crash so a uh, free heap um, or coalesce free blocks is the code of uh, the method which is invoked from the operating system and um, the crash at this level will happen when the pointer which is passed to free up the memory associated is not a valid pointer or when the address which is passed is is already freed and we are trying to do a, a free again so in these cases we will actually lead to crash so from the stack this particular stack it is difficult to find out why we got uh, invalid pointer or why we got an address which is already freed so this crash gives us a context when the corruption already happened and when we are accessing that memory as a part of the destructor code to free up the memory chunks we ended up in crash in order to find out the reason where the crash has happened as we discussed in the previous slide we need to move back closer to the point where the corruption has actually happened and then look at what which thread is accessing on this memory and what is causing the corruption that we can do using a page heap so now we will talk about what is a page heap and what is a g flags so g flags or 
it's also called as global flax editor enables and disables advanced debugging and diagnostic and troubleshooting features and this is provided as a part of windows developer toolkit and it's often used as an indicators to enable certain flags counts and track um, uh, the allocations and deallocations so it's a bunch of uh, utilities which comes up uh, gflags comes up with uh, as a part of windows uh, uh, windows uh, sdk so this prerequisite in order to use page heap uh, is to have a gflags and uh, that can be available by using uh, by installing windows developer toolkit so gflax um, there is a command line utility gflax.exe which can be used to enable and disable the page heap so what page heap actually does uh, is page heap when um, it is run in a full um, page heap mode it actually enables heap allocation monitoring on windows that reserve a chunk of memory after every allocation uh, in a such a way that it is inaccessible so if any thread is accessing this memory and uh, beyond spilling beyond the memory what it is supposed to be within and that will lead to the crash because it's a read only segment let me illustrate the same thing using a uh, uh, picture a representation of this so for example consider all these green um, colored chunks or the memory chunks which are available without page heap enabled you will have all these segments and in between you will have the gaps where each and every memory chunk will be separated so when the page heap is actually enabled this memory chunk will be will have these two padding at the end of each memory chunks and these blue lines what blue segments we you see are the padding which is available and these are read only segments which means if any process is using this memory and uh, it has overflown to other areas it has to pass through this read only segment in which case in which case it has to uh, it will read the read only segment and that lead to crash now um, i will show you a demo of how we can enable um, page heap so for this we need to install um, windows developer toolkit and um, this is the url for the same and there is uh, there are two version two um, updates available windows developer toolkit 8 and 8.1 8 so we can download based on what is the operating system you are using uh, for xp we have the um, windows developer toolkit 710 and install this once you are able to install you will have uh, you will have all the necessary tools so once I have already installed on my machine so we have this we have add plus we have um, G flags we have different set of commands and the command uh, the G flags is the one which we are interested in and um, so when you are invoking G flags let me go through this So you have a uh, GUI as well as a command line version and it will give you different options on how we can use uh, G flags. So in the command line if you want to find out if there are any processes which are having G flags with the page heap enabled we can validate by hyphen P. So hyphen P lets us if there are any applications with the G flags or the page heap already enabled. So we don't see any application with page heap enabled. In order to enable page heap for a process, so the informatica process, for, extent, for instance, um, consider uh, when we are running a session, the PMDTM has crashed. So also in the stack, we see that the PMDTM has crashed. So in order to debug that, I need to enable page heap of on PMDTM. So I will do that by gflags.exe hyphen p hyphen enable pmdtm dot exe sli slash full now it says 
we have enabled page heap on pmttm.exe now if I query gflax again now it will tell me that the page heap has been enabled with full traces when you have slash full added uh, to the exe we will have the padding which is inserted at the end of the each memory chunk which is a read only segment and that will help us when you rerun the application using uh, pmdtm the new pmdtm where we have the padding in place the application uh, any uh, during the runtime if any thread is trying to access this memory and it has over uh, overflow in the memory and accessing the memory chunk which is read only it will lead to crash and we'll be able to find out the stack we'll be able to find out the thread and the method that is overriding the memory and we'll be able to fix this so this log the code dump will be really helpful which is generated after enabling this page heap we can pass it on to informatica support and we'll be able to isolate this issue further once the run is complete you can disable uh, the pmdtm page heap on the pmdtm by using gflags.exe hyphen disable pmdtm.exe slash p slash disable so now we have gflags.exe hyphen p now no application has page heap enabled so the pmdtm is once again working normally and we'll be able to um, ru um, run the application and for that instance the code which is generated you can hand over to informatica support and we'll be able to isolate this issue further and for this process during this activity uh, it is um, recommended um, if you wish uh, you can take the backup of the exe and then replace it again uh, but there won't be any impact um, uh, per se on the exe only the memory footprint will slightly increase because there is a extra validation uh, padding which is added so uh, and uh, this helps for um, tracking the uh, memory issues and this is the best way which is available uh, you might see a uh, perform so slightly degraded because of the tracing enabled and uh, because of this uh, padding extra so there will be uh, slightly more memory footprint needed but uh, once uh, the page heap is disabled uh, everything will be normal so it's just for the debugging purpose uh, when you have to isolate this issue and then track uh, the culprit so moving back to the presentation so these are the different steps um, um, what we saw in the demo uh, document the same thing you can uh, we can go back to the location where the PMDTM exists or if it is for me it was already in the path so I'm able to invoke it uh, directly on the command line and to in order to enable page heap we'll use gflax hyphen slash p slash enable and uh, PMDTM exe slash pull to verify we can use slash p which will tell us whether there are any applications are having um, a page heap enabled or not and in order to disable we can use gflag slash p slash disable pmdtm.exe in order to download gflag or windows toolkit uh, please refer to this particular um, uh, url from uh, microsoft and you will be able to download the G uh, sdk To summarize, um, in this uh, video, we looked at how we can debug uh, Windows memory corruption problems, looked at the sample uh, stack trace, and uh, understood what is a page heap and how it will help to isolate the issue, and the demo on how to enable page heap and uh, how to collect the dumps, and tha those dumps can be handed over to support for further investigation. That's all uh, from um, this video we'd like to hear your feedback uh, you can write to us at support videos at informatica.com or you can follow us on twitter account info support thank you